So how do you know your flywheel is playing up? What is the flywheel? What's it doing? Well, this video, we're just going to look at the flywheel itself and help you to diagnose problems that are typically related to a failing or a faulty flywheel. So there are two types of flywheel. There is a solid flywheel and a dual mass flywheel. So we're going to explain the differences between those. And most of these problems are actually related to the dual mass flywheels. They're a little more complex in their operation. So basically, the flywheel is a very heavy metal disc that rotates with the engine. So the purpose of this flywheel is to smooth out the engine. The engine is a series of explosions or a series of combustion events, if you want to be picky. So depending on whether you've got four or six cylinders and the engine is a V configuration or an inline configuration, there is going to be vibrations. You're not going to have smooth transitions because there is a gap between each of these combustion events that are going on. So the flywheel actually absorbs the energy and helps everything to keep rotating at a very, very consistent speed. So it's quite important to have a flywheel on the engine. It would probably run really roughly and you'll have all sorts of running problems if you didn't have the flywheel at all. So manufacturers have actually devised this dual mass flywheel where there are effectively two masses on the flywheel or two weights. They're connected with springs and they've done this to absorb the vibrations that you get from the engine. So in a modern high performance engine or in a diesel engine, there are a lot more vibrations and these vibrations are going to go directly into the transmission. So that's potentially going to cause excessive wear on the transmission. So the dual mass flywheel setup has been specifically designed to absorb those vibrations. Now, depending on who you speak to, a lot of people will say that dual mass flywheels are nothing but a hassle and you should get rid of them and replace them with a single mass flywheel. And other people say that manufacturers knew what they were doing when they put these in. You're going to cause damage to the gearbox itself or you're going to have rough running problems if you convert to a single mass flywheel. Will. So some of this is going to be specific to your engine. So if you had a four cylinder diesel engine that was particularly rough running, you might have a completely different experience to someone who had a high performance six cylinder engine that had the dual mass flywheel and wanted to convert it to a single mass flywheel. So do your research carefully if you're thinking about changing it. But what about the problems? How do you know the flywheel is starting to play up? Well, it's there to absorb vibrations from the engine. So if you notice the engine speed is changing and you were getting excessive vibrations on those change, it's probably down to the flywheel itself. So the flywheel is rotating with the engine. So if the revs build up slowly, the flywheel speed will build up slowly. But if there's a sudden drop or a sudden increase and there is a problem with the dual mass setup on the flywheel, it's going to cause vibrations. So you may get a clunking noise. You may get just general rough running on the engine. It may start to make a squeaking or a whining noise. It can cause problems with gear changes it can cause slipping gears because everything is slightly rough. There are more vibrations. The gearbox is going to do more work to engage properly when you change gear. You might even notice it as a vibration through the clutch pedal. So here in the UK, there's still a massive amount of cars that have a manual transmission. So that gives you another opportunity to sense that there is a problem with the flywheel. So these dual mass flywheels are generally good for about 100,000 miles. Often when people replace the clutch, they view that as an opportunity to change out the dual mass flywheel. Or if the dual mass flywheel has failed, they will do the clutch at the same time, which makes sense. You're going into the same area of the engine, the gearbox house housing and everything. So the same amount of work is involved changing both items as opposed to doing one item. And then you've probably got to go back and do the other one six or seven months later or 10 or 20,000 miles later. So it makes sense to do both jobs at once rather than just have this half hearted approach where we're bodging it, where we just fix the problem and we're going to have another problem further down the line that we could have preempted. The flywheel is also connected to the starter mechanism. There's little teeth around the flywheel. Now, these often wear or chip off and you may have instances where the starter motor doesn't engage properly because there's a tooth missing on the flywheel. So if you have trouble starting, that could be down to problems on the flywheel. And this can equally affect single mass flywheels to dual mass flywheels. If you put the car in gear and you rock it forward, you'll be moving it onto another set of teeth on the flywheel. And if the 
starter motor engages then and you don't have any problem, you've probably just got a missing tooth or very worn ring around the flywheel that would indicate you really need to think about getting it replaced and updated. When flywheels go, they can be quite dramatic. They can shatter. They can actually damage the gearbox housing itself. They can actually send great big chunks of metal flying off through the engine bay at very, very high velocity. And with the toothed ring on the outside, it can act almost like a saw blade. So you really want to get on top of flywheel issues before they develop into these problems. Can you drive with a bad flywheel? Well, it depends on the degree with which the flywheel is failing. If it's just starting to fail and you're just getting a little bit of vibration, lots of drivers have carried on driving with no problems. But when you start getting to the excessive vibrations, you are causing excessive wear and tear on the gearbox, the transmission itself. The clutch is probably taking quite a beating and the extra vibrations in the engine can cause other problems and issues. So it makes sense to jump on that and get it sorted sooner rather than later. So don't delay if you suspect your flywheel is starting to fail on you. So thanks for watching. Please boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. You won't miss out on the great content we've got planned. And I've lined this video and this playlist up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.